Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the BC Calculus 7-1, Part 1, Homework Solutions on Derivatives and Integrals of Series. For number one, we want the first four non-zero terms in general term of a power series for f prime of x, and this is f of x right here. So let's start by writing out f of x. So that's going to be, let's see, if we plug in zero to begin with, that's going to just be one for our first term, and then plugging in one, that's going to be 2x. And then we're going to have, uh, we're basically just multiplying by 2x each time. So 4x squared, 8x cubed, and then finally that'll be 16x to the fourth would be the next one. And th they said the first four non-zero terms. Um, so when we take the derivative of this, uh, this one's going to go away. So we need one more term in there. And then let's just uh, throw the general term out there. That's just this term right here. Okay, let's go ahead and take that derivative. So going left to right. The constant goes away. We have a 2. Then we have 8x, 24x squared, just using our power rule here, 64x cubed. And now the general term. Uh, we're just going to multiply by the n. That's the exponent of x here. So that'll be n times 2 to the n times x to the n minus 1. For number two, given f of x here, this series, we want to find f prime of x, first four non-zero terms in the general term. Let's start by expanding this series. So we've got a first term of just one, because you're plugging in zero for the exponent everywhere. After that, we have negative one-half times x minus three. And each time now, we're just going to multiply by basically this. This is essentially a common ratio that we keep multiplying by. So we're going to have, let's see, that'll be uh, positive 1 fourth x minus 3 quantity squared. And then we'll have negative 1 eighth x minus 3 quantity cubed. And let's go one more term, positive 1 16th x minus 3 quantity to the fourth. And then the general term that we'll just add over there at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative from left to right here. The 1 is going to go away. Uh, this next term would be a negative one-half x minus, or plus three-halves if we expanded it. Um, but again, taking the derivative, that constant goes away. So we just have a negative one-half. And then over here, I'm not going to get rid of the parentheses. Um, so this is just going to be one-half x minus three. Next, this is going to be minus three over eight x minus three squared. And next we'll have, if we multiply by four, this will be one-fourth x minus three cubed. And now for the general term, we multiply by n, um, so this will then be n times negative one-half to the n, and then we'll have an x minus three quantity to the n minus one. On this problem, we want the first four non-zero terms in general term of f prime's power series for this function. We'll start by writing out the original. So my first term, uh, all this stuff to the zero power is just going to be one. And this is just a geometric. I'm just multiplying by negative x plus 1 each time. So I've got minus parentheses x plus 1 plus x plus 1 quantity squared minus x plus 1 cubed. And let's see here. I want four non-zero terms after taking the derivative. So I'm going to need one more term because this 1 here is going to get zeroed out. So I'll have positive x plus 1, all that to the fourth power. And then plus dot, dot, dot general term here. Taking the derivative of each of these now, this uh, first one is just going to get zeroed out, so that's just gone. So we go on to this next parentheses, which if I take the derivative of this, I've just got one instead of the x there, and this other one is getting zeroed away. And we have a negative out in front, so that's a negative one. For this next one, we have two times all this stuff to the first power. And then for the next one, we're going to have minus three uh, x plus 1 squared, and then plus 4 x plus 1 quantity cubed. And then finally over here, we're multiplying by n, and we've got x plus 1 to the n minus 1. We still have this negative 1 to the n out in front. And there it is. For this problem, we want the first four non-zero terms in general term of f prime based on this original function series here. We'll start by writing out the uh, series for f of x. And since we want a derivative and we want four non-zero terms for the derivative, I'm going to write out five non-zero terms for the original just to be on the safe side. So my first term is just three times all this stuff to the zero. That's three times one, or just three. 
And next term is going to be 3 times all this stuff to the first power plus 3 times all this stuff squared, 3 times all this stuff cubed, and one more term, 3 times all this stuff to the fourth, plus my general term, which is just all this stuff to the n. Now for my f prime, this 3 is going away right away. Uh, next, I've got the derivative of 3 times this little parentheses full of stuff. This is really having, like having, uh, let's see here, 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2. If I take the derivative of those, I just end up with 3 over 2, the coefficient of 3 over 2x. The 3 halves gets differentiated away. For this next one, I'm not going to multiply this out and distribute or anything. I'm just going to use my uh, power rule, but I'm going to have to use a chain rule too. So I'm going to have 2 times 3 giving me 6 times all of this stuff to the first power. The catch, though, is that I have an inner derivative of 1 half because of this divided by 2. So I really have 6 over 2, which is just 3. And then we have x minus 1 over 2 to the first power. Same idea over here. I've got, let's see, this will be 9 over 2 times all this stuff squared. Again, we have an inner derivative of 2 that we have to multiply by with our chain rule. Here I've got, let's see, 3 times 4, that's going to be 12 over 2 is 6. And then we have all this stuff to the third power. And for the general term, I've got 3 halves n times all this stuff to the n minus 1. On this problem, we're given the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub nx to the n. Uh, this is a series that converges to f of x for all real x, which is actually an important point. But based off of this, they want us to find f prime of 1. So we've got the original series here. Uh, this is essentially f of x right here. To get f prime of 1, we first need to take the derivative of this series. And there's no point in writing this all out in expanded form. We can actually just do this directly inside the summation. So this n here, uh, for derivative purposes, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x here, because this is f of x, this n counts as a constant. So we're just going to use the power rule to take the derivative. I'm going to multiply by n. So I'm going to have n times a sub n times x to the n minus 1. And there's one little thing I'm going to have to change here. I started with an n value of 0. But if I plug 0 in as my first n this time around, I'm going to end up with x to the negative 1. And that's no good because this is supposed to converge for all real x, and one of the real x's out there is 0. This is not going to converge for 0 if I don't change that start value because then I would be doing 1 over 0, which is no good. So I'm going to make my new start value 1. If I make it 1, I end up with x to the 0 as my first term, which is OK. At least we're not dividing by 0. All right, uh, so we're almost there. Now, before you go ahead and just kind of pick answer choice e with this little n minus 1 exponent, keep in mind we still need to do f prime of 1. We have to plug 1 in for the x value in here. So let me go ahead and do that now. So all I did was I substituted 1 for x inside here. And 1 to the n minus 1, or really anything else, is just going to be 1. So this all simplifies to just n times a sub n inside there. And that matches answer choice D. For number 6, we're given a function defined by this summation. And we want to know the derivative of this thing. One way to do this would be to expand this series and then take the derivative and put it back in a sigma. Or you could just take the derivative of this general term in here. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So taking a look at what I've got here, there's only a single variable in here, this x. So we're just going to use the, the power rule here because this is just x to a constant. So I'm going to multiply my numerator by the 2 minus 1, the exponent here. Um, so I'm going to have a, a parentheses 2n minus 1 out in front here. I'm still going to have my negative 1 to the n plus 1. And now I'm going to have x to the 2n minus 2 and then 2n minus 1 on the bottom. So this is a big mess, but we really just use the power rule. And now we can go ahead and cancel these 2n minus 1s, leaving us with the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then x to the 2n minus 2. Now, let me just double check uh, to make sure this doesn't mess us up with this uh, power rule here. Because sometimes when you take the derivative, you have to change your lower limit of summation. So if I plug in a 1 here, 
Um, that's going to give me x to the 0, which is still OK. We're not going to end up with a negative exponent. So that means that I can accept this as a good answer. And that's going to be answer choice. Let's see here. We need the n plus 1 for the negative 1, so that's going to be answer choice A.